from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Well, hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report. I'm Fenton Bailey, uh, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by the other bigger, better co-founder of World of Wonder, Randy Barbado, who's standing in for James St. James this week. Oh, <laughs> never crowned, that's so lovely. And of course, Tom Campbell, our chief creative officer. Good to see you, Fenton. Good to see you, Randy. Good to see you too. As usual, we count down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow. And I'm just going to start off at number 10. Number 10. I'm just so sorry to share the news, which many of you may have heard already, that Cherry Valentine, queen of season two, Drag Race UK, passed away last week. Um, just 28 years old. Uh, an amazing character. Um, just one of the things I love about her, among so many, she just had the most spectacular, infectious laugh that was like, you know, it was, it's just like that, it's like the shade button sound. It's like you like Cherry Valentine, you know? But that laugh was sort of emblematic, really, of just her incredibly generous and loving spirit. She was so... So much fun. And although the, her cause of passing hasn't been revealed, it, you know, it seems, well, she took her own life. And that is such a sad and tragic thing that someone who, I guess it's always the, the, the people who you would never imagine. She was so strong and resilient. She was a mental health nurse. Um, and in fact, earlier this year made a documentary called uh, Cherry Valentine, Gypsy Queen and Proud, because- It's, a, it's an amazing doc, it's, it's really an amazing documentary. And, and it's funny how, how with all queens on Drag Race, Drag Race, you never, you, you, it, it's the teaser to who these queens are, you know? And, and Cherry Valentine, um, she is this amazing multi-dimensional and, you know, led such a rich life. And I think seeing that doc, you really get another, uh, just, just, you get to understand more of, of, of who he was. Yeah. I mean, Cherry struggled with his identity. Um, and also coming from the gypsy community, the traveler community, the gypsy Roma and traveler community, I think is GRT, you know, that, isn't always the most accepting community necessarily. And Cherry was, had issues with, with, with her family. Um, her mom stuck by her. In fact, her mom came to see not only Cherry in drag, but the first ever drag show she had ever seen in her life. Mm -hmm. And Cherry was just such a loving and embracing and just such a selfless person. It's just the, it's the saddest thing. Can, can um, I just say two other things? And that and and this is not to promote things. It's really about like getting to know her more. She's also featured in work in um, Work the World UK in one of the episodes. And it really, it's such a sweet and touching short film that's worth checking out. And also, I think you know, we're planning on raising some funds for an organization in the UK, which we're going to announce at some point in the future mm -hmm. in her honor. She made such an impact at such a young age. Uh, I can't even believe it's true. That's why I'm so silent. It just seems unreal to me. I'm having trouble absorbing yeah. it as the truth. I know it is and very sad and wish her family and everyone who knew her and loved her closely and from afar, uh, you know, uh, our, our deepest sympathy. Absolutely. Um, I was just reminded of her farewell message when she sashayed away on uh, episode two of season two. She wrote, always remember, love yourself first. And I think uh, words for, uh, we can all, should all remember at this time and, and words to live by. And um, rest in perfection, Cherry Valentine. All right, Tom, number nine 
if you are having difficulties and if you are having thoughts of self-harm in the U.S., just dial 988. Um, if you're outside of the U.S., the Samaritans operate helplines, um, and we'll post those numbers on the WOW report too. Number nine. Well, it's hard to make a segue from something so sad and sublime to the ridiculous things we cover here on the WOW report, but I'm just the man to do that. And I want to talk about, you guys, I hope you're sitting down. Because would you have ever imagined in your wildest dreams that rocker, hot stuff, Adam Levine would dirty DM some girls? I, I can't, I, it's so out of character. I'd never see it coming. It's crazy. Uh, what is it with our society? I know I'm like bucking everything, but like this Adam Levine story is out of control. Well, it's a non-story, right? I mean, it's like a story that's occupying every column, every inch of my <laughs> my social feed. Um, and I guess it's because he's hot, right? Is that the bottom line? It's just sort of a sexy story on 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 a soap opera or something. But like, leave people alone. Let them do what they want. And here's another thing. And I'm going to get so canceled. This is my last. <laughs> I think speak. you've already been canceled because just before you say that other thing, no, it's just like. The story, what the story started from the women who were involved in this. So they felt that they were wronged in different ways. So that's just something to keep in mind that of course. And I'm giving us a, a stupid half half formed opinion. But when are you responsible for your own sexual behavior and your own can't you block people online I, I i know one by the way no one dms me so i'm fine but um i i have read articles not i haven't gone deep into like a study but it just seems to me this is a bigger apart from the story couples cheat couples you know monogamy i have a big question mark about in general just like is it really possible um you know what constitutes cheating and isn't that between the spouses and shouldn't we just keep our noses out of it? That's, I guess, and you're saying there's a whole, there's victims in this that I'm ignoring. I think there there probably are. And by the way, and I, you know, having said that, and I, I'm about to be canceled as well, because um, I never found Adam Levine interesting until I read some <laughs> of his DMs. Number I, one. <laughs> Number two, that's what DMs are for, people. Oh. That's what they're for. And you know what? Guilty, guilty right here, oh. okay? Oh. I mean, okay. but having said that also, yes, there, it does seem to be a flashpoint because there are people who claim to be victims of this and clearly his wife is okay with it. I mean, he's like calling a hot booty a hot booty. See it, <laughs> say it, sorted. <laughs> I mean, I love Randy's comment that he never found Adam Levine interesting until he read the DMs. I have to say, I never found Adam Levine interesting even after reading the DMs. I mean, it's like, they're so banal. It's like, you got a hot booty or a hot body. Like, show me, uh, show me that booty. Show me that booty. Is that um, what it is? I again, mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to shame Adam or, his, or the people that feel victimized by him. I just think culturally, our obsession with the impossibility, the near impossibility of monogamy and how people judge and point and... And, you know, we have such a flirty, I don't know what your Instagram looks like, but mine's rather suggestive. <laughs> not not my personal Instagram, but the people that somehow magically show up on my feed. Your anyway. feed, yeah. Yeah, um, I blame the algorithm, Tom. That's not you. I, that's they the know algorithm. what I like. Instagram knows <laughs> what I like. I do like how everyone's saying that he looks like a Chipotle bag because of his tattoos. Because of all the print. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Adam, I love you if you're listening. DM <laughs> Tom of, at Tom of LA, Adam, anytime. And I'll tell no one. Okay, let's move on. Um, <laughs> Blake, you're not canceled, so maybe you can do number eight. <laughs> number eight. Um, have you guys seen Dahmer on Netflix? No. No. Michael of the Office watched the whole thing last night. I know we love to talk about cannibalism here on the WOW Report, but I have not watched a single frame of Dharma. And I have to say, I am unlikely to ever for a number of reasons. But I have a sick uh, obsession with like 
serial killers and like crazy mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. in the sicker, the worse, like the cannibals and the necrophiliacs. Like it's just so interesting to me that they would do that. But um, anyway. But, but the, the, the Netflix would do a series or the Dharma would eat people? Don't that cereal anyone would ever want to eat or saw or you know anything the noodle. Have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how about yeah, and that anyone would ever want to kill. But anyway, carry on, yeah. There that too. That and, too. <laughs> yeah, why not just slide into people's DMs and leave it at that? Like, well, um, um my what's it like? what, how much have you watched? I've watched the first four episodes and I kind of know the story. Like I'm like, oh, this must be the guy that escapes. And then, because there was one guy that like escapes right. and he's out of his mind because he's been drugged. And there's a character played by Niecy Nash that's a neighbor that like finds him wondering and calls the cops. And Jeffrey Dahmer comes and the cops release the guy back to Dahmer mm. and he later dies. The- that is outrageous. And there was no accountability, right? Nothing happened to the cops. No, huh? I hear that Niecy Nash is the breakout star of not that she's not a breakout star everything she does but she is she shines in this uh series is that true i i love her in this now the first four episodes that i've seen she maybe it's not to like her breakout part yet you know but from what i've seen of her it's really good and i loved her in claws so the show is like very gory it shows like animal guts and you know real people guts and you, do you ever have to look away for the screen or can you take all that in and go to bed at night? No, I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> Just staring right into the screen. Uh, some people are saying that it kind of sexualizes him. I guess that he was like hot. Evan Peters is hot and is playing him. Like there's parts where he's like jerking off. I mean, you don't see anything, but. You see his butt a couple of times, and yeah. We know what that looks like. We know what that looks like, right? Exactly. Well, I mean, the real life Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't hideously ugly by any means. He was good looking. That was the whole, uh, that's part yeah. of the fascination, the media fascination. There's been a controversy because Netflix, you know, uses the tags on their shows. Like, this is goes under horror, and this goes oh. under comedy. Well, they put a, an LGBT tag, and people were up in arms about that. Which, I mean, it is kind of a gay story, I guess, right? Yeah, do they have a straight hashtag as well for straight stories? <laughs> they have like Tim Allen in it. Does that get a hashtag straight? <laughs> You're halfway through, almost. Are you going to watch the rest? I plan to watch the rest at, on my at my own time. Do you pull up like a TV tray and make yourself a nice dinner and then sit and watch after work or what, when, how do you, when do you consume it? If you, I have, I have a steak and then I finish up with some gummy worms. Yeah. (laughs) Some fava beans. (laughs) And what's what's the sort of point of view, you know, other than gratuitously gory and violent and needlessly sick and pointless. Other than that, what's the point of view? I mean, it's told from, I guess, his point of view and, I don't really know. <laughs> it's um, that's fair. If there's a Ryan himself, also who I also follow, who is not shirtless on Instagram, um, t- tweeted out that this was the highest rated original thing ever on Netflix, which is redemption for him because you know there was that stat that went out that Shonda Rhimes' deal and his deal cost so much money that Shonda, the Bridgerton and everything has like gone through the roof, and that his stuff has been relatively uh, under the radar. So. Maybe this will help in the Shonda Ryan Wars, which, by the way, I would watch that. But is that true? I mean, maybe I'm just biased because we talk about all these shows that that he does for Netflix. But like Hollywood, everyone likes that and everyone likes the Warhol one. So what what have been his big flops on Netflix? Well, Well, I think that the critical response is different than that. They don't. Like, do they care about that over at Netflix? I mean, are they altruistic? No, they want people to watch. I don't think they have relatively small show. audiences. Maybe not at FUBAR. Maybe that's all the rage at FUBAR. Don't get me wrong. I think maybe in the Midwest, they're not watching uh, Hollywood and Andy Warhol Diaries. All the well, we certainly are. And but they're, oh, yeah. 
We're rooting for Ryan and Shonda to come together and make the biggest show ever, like Xanadu. <laughs> like Grey's Anatomy and Nip Tuck. Mm. There you go. That's the crossover I'm waiting to see. With a cannibal theme. <laughs> Nip Tuck in. Ah, hmm. All right, let's take a quick break. Um, RuPaul's Drag Race Series 4 is airing now on Wow Presents Plus worldwide. UK, the UK version. The UK version, that's right. RuPaul's Drag Race UK Series 4. Um, and if you're not subscribed, you're not watching all of Drag Race. You got a question, Blake? I do. What historical TV show was the first of its kind to premiere in primetime on this day in 1960? Blimey. That's a good one. Uh, we'll be right back with the answer after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Randy and Tom and Blake. And we're counting down the top 10 things this week that made us go wow. But first, we have a question from Blake. What historical TV show was the first of its kind to premiere in primetime on this day in 1960? Historical. First of its kind in primetime. So it's not a sitcom. Nope. It's not a drama. So it, it's a it's not a variety show. I don't think it I don't think it's a I, I'm gonna say it's candid camera. It's a sort of a reality show. Any so other gossip? Uh the Flintstones. <laughs> Animated. Nice one, Blake. Very good, very good. I thought you guys would get that one right off the bat. We're not that, not old. that old, Blake. Not that old. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> we have reached number seven, Tom. Number seven. Randy and I, total work, total work trip. No fun was had. Okay, we had a lot of fun. We were in Vegas this weekend. And I want to hear from Randy too, but we, uh, I, we, did, we went there to watch RuPaul's Drag Race Live, just because it had been a while and we wanted to make sure it was fresh. What's amazing about RuPaul's Drag Race Live, and I just want to hear what Randy has to say, is it's like, a, it's the same show. It's, it's in, in that, it's the same premise. It's an episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, but the queens keep changing over time and they all have a big spectacular number in the middle of it and it keeps changing. And I was blown away by the production value. There is a number, spoiler alert, with Latrice, Mother Tuck and Roy Al, that was just incredible. I saw it twice, two nights in a row, and I wept openly both nights. What the, the combination of performer Latrice Le Royale, who has so much heart, you know, can stand there and make you weep, and the song, which is "This Is It" from uh, that circusy movie, and this is "This Is Me," right? This is me. This is me from the the last, the greatest, the greatest show, show on earth. Thank you. I need so much help. And 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 the staging and the dancing, I, I was blown away. And that was just part of it. What do you have to say, Randy? I, I, I'd like to jump in here because actually I was saying this is what I wanted to talk about. And it for me, it was like and like kind of a religious experience. And 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 it is it is this great show in a great room in a not so great hotel. But <gasps> um but but it 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 is so magical. And Latrice and Kennedy Davenport, Asia O'Hara, who is the host, who's like, they kill it and you fall in love. And now uh, Plastica's in the show. And we saw it with um, with uh, uh, Derek, uh, Derek Berry. And I got to tell you. Jara Sophia, Kahana Montrese were also. In, in oh my God, night. yeah, yeah. And, and all of them deliver. And it is. But Alexis Mateo, Alexis Mateo, pardon me. Oh yeah, Alexis, Alexis Mateo, who's such a great dancer and is so funny. And these, the, the, the thing about it, I don't want to get emotional, but to see Kennedy or to see Latrice do the thing they were built to do on a beautiful stage to move you, like the show moves you. And it moved the room, right? You know, like people were so in it. And 
So, and this is not like a sales pitch. If I could, I would go see that show every night. If I could, if I lived in Vegas, but I can't live in Vegas because I'd be gambling and I never. You would be, you'd be living on the street. Yeah. Um, can I also say, and and there's more, there's enough drag to go around. I also <laughs> went for my very first time to to uh, Treasure Island Hotel to Senior Frogs Restaurant for the uh, Voss Events uh, Drag Brunch hosted by Chanel, the first queen ever to walk into the drag room. And uh, the night, the, the afternoon I saw it, it had uh, 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 Larry Edwards, AKA Hot Chocolate, who we love. And it also had Jaro Sophia. It had uh, Roxy, not from Drag Race, but last name, Amazing Queen. And it had, um, 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 why am I being, oh, Kahana Montrese. And they, it is the raunchiest, dirtiest, drunkenest show. If you don't like bridal parties, do not go. But Chanel takes it to a level of of rawness and nastiness that is fan fucking tastic. It is what both shows in different ways give you exactly what drag is. Sort of like what's great about Drag Race uh, Live is that it's sort of it's 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 in this it's it's a diamond in the setting, right? It's 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 Las Vegas. It's high production value, and but you strip all that away, and at the heart of drag, it is just pure entertainment. That's what happens. You know, something I love, Tom, is I, I, you know, I know Randy loves Vegas and, and I love Vegas too, like conceptually. And I thought long and hard about it, but, but you just nailed it effortlessly one day. You said, yeah, drag race is, a, is Las Vegas is a city in drag. <laughs> and, and that is why drag race live in Las Vegas is the perfect show as is senior frogs drag brunch. I mean, it's just like, it's like peanut butter and jelly that made for each other. And we're used to like being outrageous and crazy. A lot of Americans, Vegas is their is their opportunity to let their hair down and to let and to be open to the to the wonderful world of drag. And just one more thing, Drag Race Live, the pit crew. They there is this amazing pit crew. They're choreographed by co-director Jamal Sims. So tight, so hot. Like they they were off the charts. Um, this, they're the pit crew. We call them the pit crew, but they're professional dancers. It's like going to the Olympics of dance and seeing them. And our job is to make sure that when they come up with new costumes for new numbers, that they don't include shirts. Just so you know, you can thank Randy and me. <laughs> and sometimes you... pants. Well, I, I didn't want to go there. Yeah, sometimes pants. Well, okay. Well, this is a good note on which to segue into number six. Number six. I want to talk about House of Love. Yes, you think of House of Love as the selection of cocktails and mocktails that we have launched recently, but we borrowed the name also because House of Love sponsored an event last week for Extraordinary Families, which is the amazing adoption agency thanks to whom I have my kids and thanks to whom many people have kids. It's a foster adoption agency in California um, that really, like, prioritizes LGBTQ plus parents and kids too. Um, and the need is real because there's something like 60,000 kids in the system in California. Anyway, we decided to have a party and a benefit. Randy, you were on the, the host committee, as was Tom. Thank you. Thank you both so much. As, of course, was uh, Carson Kressley, Ross Matthews, um, Michelle Visage, and yes, Rue. And of course, Alec Mappa and Jeffrey Bowyer Chapman and Ronan Farrow, all of whom have been guest judges at one point or another on RuPaul's Drag Race. So the whole event was called House of Love, a celebration of chosen families with your host from RuPaul's Drag Race. And this is the segue link, which I finally get to almost at the end of the piece, the pit crew. <laughs> the pit yeah. crew wearing the House of Love underwear, which is... um. Just like the can, lots of lovely candy stripes and House of Love right in the front there of the <laughs> of the of the briefs, the very brief brief. Fenton has a beautiful home that he very generously shares oh. with like big office parties. And when we used to actually get together, which we did again. By the way, the party was such a success, Fenton, not only money-wise, but it feels like there is this moment again in my life where master off. Where we're seeing each other again. And I said it felt like, and, I, and this is a positive, I felt like I came out of a coma for two and a half years, because it not only was it a Hollywood party, you know, quote unquote, because it was pools and food and music and lushness, but it, because of the cause, it, it every and we all knew each other and we're all seeing each other after years of being apart. It was such 
it was a spirit and I'm, I'm corny, but it was a spiritual event. And, and, and then we found out all these different people. I brought my friend John from college and I found out by, because he happened to be in town and his two children were adopted. And other people from the office, we found out through the foster system. And so it really, it, 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 this whole, you know, you said that number 40,000, it's a huge, is it 40 or 60? 60. 60,000. You think of 60,000 kids and it just breaks your heart. And, and it's so yeah. glad that this organization, a little tiny bit we could do to help this organization. Well, no, it was amazing. And we had uh, some fantastically generous sponsors, including actually Andy Cohen. So thank oh. you, Andy, for your sponsorship. Um, and we raised $300,000 for Extraordinary Founders, which was oh. really good. And I think at a time, you know, it, it was it, it, the, the, the only cloud in the sky that day was that was also the, the day I heard the news about Cherry Valentine. But it really made me think that, you know, now more than ever, an organization like Extraordinary Families is critical and we all need to pull together and support each other. And um, love. Yeah. And, this, and to name to name drop one more person, who is your DJ? Just some new kid? Oh, we have Moby, Moby DJ. Bless him. I mean, so kind and generous. Came and DJ absolutely for free. And um yeah, it was really a bit. Pangina came from Drag Race Thailand versus the world. Valentina, Morgan McMichaels, Mayhem Miller, Naomi Smalls. So it was, uh, and of course, and it was somebody's birthday, wasn't it, Randy? Randy. It was Randy's birthday. He very kindly allowed us to do this on his birthday. And Rue, who gave him a cake? Yeah. We didn't do every candle for every year because you know crowd fire fire. It was a party. small cake, but Nolan made and Nolan made the cake. I mean, it was perfection. Yeah. It was Michelle Visage's birthday, and also she um, was she is she the chairman Barnaby of Barnaby Murph, the, Barnaby Murph, the uh, CEO of Extraordinary Families. There's a lot of birthdays right about now. It was Ross Matthews' yeah. birthday just the other day. I think there's a because lot of Virgos. It's, it's, it's nine months after the holiday. It's like P it, your parents did nookie nookie around the holiday. New Year's nookie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. <laughs> All right. Um, let's move on to number five. Number five. Oh, um, so, you know, there's been a lot going on with the space program. There's been... Um, Jupiter's been really nearby. Yesterday it was the closest it will be to Earth for like, I don't know, a gazillion years. I took a picture of it. Oh. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, I saw Theron. And Theron took some amazing pictures on his uh, I know, but th look how good it looks. Mm. Um, there is a new <laughs> space song, right? The, the Space Force song that came out last week. And then, you know, yesterday, the day before, the DART mission um, exploded dimor this, this asteroid dimorphous, and there's great footage of it. So there's all this hype about space. And I am trying so hard to be enthused by it and to be, to be swept up in the hype of space. And I'm not. I'm not. The space song is stupid. My picture of Jupiter sucks. And I kind of like, I watched the whole thing of the asteroid. You know, first of all, you didn't even get to see it blow up. And then you got to see it on these telescopes and it's really tiny. You don't really get the, but like, so I was thinking about like how, when I was young, how I remember like those significant space moments being so exciting. And now I feel kind of like- It's because you're jaded. You, you're spoiled and jaded. That's I'm why. not jaded. I'm not jaded. It's that I don't, I, every day I work so hard to have hope and be positive. And you know, this, this space program is all about that. It's about the future. It's about like the possibilities, but things suck on earth right now. Like, but so we're going to go so up there. About like, space. I don't care about up there. Cause this isn't even going to last. Like, I, like it doesn't that it bring you some peace of mind to know that there's a telescope so powerful you can literally see back in time. Doesn't it give you some comfort to know that there are trillions upon trillions of galaxies and therefore any shit that's going on here on Earth ultimately is meaningless, ultimately is pointless, and you can just walk away from the TV, you can turn off CNN, and you can think about the universe and your tiny, insignificant, 
doesn't matter at all place in it. I think that's that's a huge sigh of relief and breath of freedom. If the takeaway is that Randy doesn't mean anything, I like this conversation. I like where it went. I like where it's going. I'm just teasing, I'm teasing. Um, and Jim, you know what? That's beautiful. I changed my mind. No, I don't. <laughs> because I can't just look through a telescope and suddenly everything disappears. No. Give me a massage with a happy ending, then everything hey, might be oh, Give me, uh, give me a, a, a machine that turns salt water into water. You know what I mean? Like these sound like, <laughs> like no, but like that we need water. We don't need water in California. It's like, it's gonna be a problem. Well, it's all in Florida. I, That's I, it's right. like, it's like this thing, you know, if you can't love yourself, how are you gonna love somebody else? It's like, we have to take care of ourselves and the homes we live in before we're up there like singing space space force songs and plotting our escape from the horrors that we have created here. That's what I think when I think of space right now. And so maybe, I and maybe I, I don't disagree with you, and maybe maybe the Republicans have to figure out a way to like kill space travel. You know what I mean? Like so much of the so much of the ecological stuff is being hampered by our divisive government and the and the conservatives and the anti-science crazies. Well, I'm so I glad you brought it down it to them, us. I hate, uh, let's hate on the Republicans because that that we can all agree on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> I feel better I already. I Thank do you. too. I feel so much better. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, Blake, have you got a question for us? I sure do. There have only been five films that have crossed the 200 billion mark. Can you name any of them? Oh my God. Two of them are in the same franchise. All right. Um, we'll have the answer, or some of it, maybe, if we're lucky, after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hey, welcome back to the Wow Report here on Radio Andy. We're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow. Randy is in for James St. James, and here's Tom and Blake with the answer to the teasing question. Yeah, I asked. There have been five films that have crossed 200 billion at the box office, and two of them are set from the, and two of them are from the same franchise. Can you name any of them? Well, one of them must be Star Wars, right? The Force Awakens. I know one of them is my least favorite movie ever, and the sequel's coming out. I can't wait not to see it. Avatar. Yeah, that's number one. That's so weird, isn't it? It's so weird that that's, that's number one. Ugly, awful movie. I don't know what it. I know that uh, one of them is Deep Throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, Avatar, well, Force Awakens. Oh, how about? Um, um, no, I, I don't, don't know. know the names of the Star Wars movies after the first three, so it's it's another Star Wars movie. No, it's Star Wars is the only one. It's Avengers Endgame oh, of course. and Infinity War. That's oh, the same franchise. And then Titanic rounds it up. Oh, Titanic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Titanic. So, so two by James Cameron, too. Good for him. All righty. Surprise there isn't a Ryan Murphy movie in there. Uh, Number four, Tom. Number four. I spent four hours of my life watching the new Fox series, Monarch. It's supposed to be Nashville meets Empire, the new Empire. Remember Empire? About the record label and all that? Mm. And it's a family and their country. And Susan Sarandon eek, plays the queen of country music. I think his name is Trace Atkins. He's a real country. He's the king of country music. And then there's a bunch of British actors talking like they're from, but they're from Houston, not Nashville. And um, I was drawn to it because, you know, I do follow my Tanya Tucker fan page. And she made a guest appearance on that, on this week's episode, which I watched. Um, it's so close to being campy enough to be good. The wig on this woman, Anna Friel, who's this very established, you'd know her if you saw her British actress. Uh -huh. She has a wig that like four people could wear. It's like a joke wig. It's like a Sid and Marty Croft wig. It's <laughs> the puppeteers must, 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 must use it. But, and they have, every scene ends with somebody like looking in the mirror and going, well, there's only room for one queen in this town. But they don't, they aren't that good. They need, they, they need to like hire some drag queens to come up with some like snappy, like bitch. That's what I'm talking about. You've the watched four hours. So you like it, right? Well, I hated it. 
And then I couldn't <laughs> stop watching it. And the, you know, they also did on on demand. Um, they did like a behind the music, you know, monarch. And and um, uh, it was like it was awful. It was like a it was like a drag race uh, 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 challenge that we didn't have time to edit right. It was just like you know, well, you know, you got to go say about uh, Susan Ray, but she's a real bitch. Um, the highlight of it for me, all around, Beth Ditto. Remember Beth Ditto from Gossip? Yes. She plays the sister. She's Anna Friel's sister, but she don't fit in them because she's queer and she's heavy and she stopped fighting for mama's attention. I don't know about you, but I'm out of here. And um, she can sing the shit out of it. Um, she's, from, she's from Arkansas, so she's got she knows that country. She's got the real accent. And I want to see more and more and more in her. It's got the ingredients. I really was kind of looking forward to it. I know I'm crazy. And being at the Emmys this past year, you know, they do the montages of, of shows. And it's like, shows you love, shows you love, network show. Shows you love, shows you love, network show. So, you know, Abbott Elementary is obviously has risen to the occasion. And I'm hoping, uh, people love ghosts on CBS. I might try that out too. But I was hoping Monarch <laughs> would. It's awful. It doesn't. But if it, I feel like if, if there's time, there's no time anymore. But you know how Dynasty just switched, uh, flipped uh -huh. the switch. It needs to flip the switch. It needs. They need to let us consult or something because it needs to be better. Beth mm. Monarch. Monarch. Okay, that is Tuesdays, 9 p.m. on Fox. Number three. Number three. Gavin Newsom. Period. That's all. Gavin Newsom. Okay. He's amazing. He's, oh. No, he, no, <laughs> no, I just, okay. The midterms are coming. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm obsessed. I, I donate money every day. I'm not going to have it between Vegas and the midterms. I am, I'm going to go bust, but what we don't, we don't have great communicators. He is a great communicator. And he's also, in my opinion, he's a great leader. And yes, he probably will be president of the United States one day. But right now, I wish more Democrats would pay attention to the way he communicates. Well, because what's he doing? Can those on the other side, on the other side, that's all they do. They're, they're all great communicators and they base their communications on lies. He bases communi his communication on facts. The crime rate is higher in Texas than in California. The murder rate is like, the gun murder rate is 67% higher in Texas than California. You know, taxes are higher in Texas than, Cal like just, it's like all the smoke and mirrors that the, uh, that the Republicans use to, to, you know, hide the fact that they're doing jack shit and, and, and what they spend 24 hours a day doing is attacking us and attacking us with lies. You just need people like Gavin Newsom who cuts at, you know, who can cut to the chase in like a sentence. Not like this, not like this. Not like all that. Um, like this. Here's, you know, Bill Clinton was an amazing democratic communicator. Pete Buttigieg, I think is an amazing oh my God, yes. communicator. Gavin Newsom, I'm a little bit guilty because I did vote for him and I love him and I, I want to, I, you know, people are talking about him for president. Doesn't he come off a little bit like the preppy douche in like a t 80s teen movie? A little bit, but that'll like, like if he runs a, a national campaign, that'll get, he's, he's not like Buttigieg, who, who by the way, is a brilliant communicator. So they're, they're right next yep. to each other. Like, I think the thing is he doesn't deflect He's clear. And yes, he's a little too polished. You're right. Even the way he sits and stuff like that. Yeah. Hair on the side. Don't call it back. I'm being totally superficial, but you know, these things matter. Yeah. He needs to be messier. Single breast, not double breast. Um, I, um, and, and how can we, can we use the wow report? Can we have like a, a, a Gavin Newsom fact every day or something? Or is it too much yeah. work? No, I, definitely I, we can. I love the stuff you're saying. It's so hard for anything, you know, they can explode a, an asteroid now and people aren't satisfied. It's hard to break I out. Some, this people, cycle. some people aren't happy about that. I mean, by the way, you... I think a, fa a, a regular fact of his and Pete Buttigieg, because you're it, this number three should actually be the two of them because right. they are the two great communicators of the Democratic I Party. I do right think, now. though, Democrats 
you call it communication that the Republicans are so good at. But really, as you said, it is just based on lies. And I think it is very easy to be outrageous with a lie, whereas the truth and the fact does require, there are some limitations on that. So you can't <laughs> always sensationalize right. the truth. And I do think it is a remarkable talent that Newsom has and Buttigieg has is just to like lay waste to the lies with clearly outlining the facts, as opposed to getting lost in the weeds, which I do think is a liability of being Democrat, because by in, by by definition, you take into account different points of view and complexities. Right. But it is, and I, I, I'm a broken record about this, but if you haven't seen, James talked about it last week, the U, United States and the, Hol, and, the, and the Holocaust, it's it just, oh, the Ken Burns documentary, it's on PBS, and PBS.org. It just talks, because what the Republicans do, and I won't say it right in this short time, but like, they play on our fears. They play on the, the the worst, the worst in us, the fear of other, the fear of we're gonna something's gonna be taken mm -hmm. away from us. That you know we're somehow being like so. So you your uh -huh. your kind of instincts, your animal instincts are like get away. Yeah. When you know we know that immigration only makes this country better. We we know you know on and on. Right. Exactly. And, you know, as Madonna said, they're very reductive. Thank you, and I loathe hijinks. By the way, now that Randy, I'm thinking about this, more, yes. No, just one other great Democratic communicator is that guy, Jamie Raskin, who's at Maryland House of Representative, who just lost his mind last week um, on the, in Congress, and Jamie Raskin. We should, like, those are three people we should be amplifying their words because, anyway, sorry. Yeah. I love it. All white. I totally white, do. White Number three, three great Number three, three great Democratic communicators. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Um, I'm also a September baby, and this year I happen to be celebrating my big four zero. And I just want to say I don't feel old at all, and I feel like 50 is the new 30. So I feel like I'm, I'm in the prom, and I've had a really good week. I went to the zoo and, and I went to see Grace Jones and I'm having a fabulous party with my family and friends. So I'm on top of the world. Yeah, you're uh, having a fabulous party. Where's our invitation, Blake? Uh, yours is on your desk. <gasps> oh my gosh, That let, let me see that. That looks so cool. <laughs> it's really cool. It's that tit. You guys, I'm glad Blake's happy, but this is hard on me. <laughs> the millennial producers turning 40. I what know. The rest of us. I'm so, I'm just, time flies. How, how, what, what do you guys remember about being 40? Was it Nothing, because I'm so fucking old. I can't remember being 40, <laughs> bitch. Well, <laughs> I wonder, um, were you guys like 40 whenever I started here? <laughs> oh my God. Are we oh talking about God. Let's not right. talk about that part of it. I was a bachelor during my 40s. Me yes, too. Were. No, we, we, when I turned 40, we were together, Randy. No, nope. it's that was the end, Fenton. That was the end. Uh, Randy, I think I remember when we were together. It's burned I, on my soul. It, 41 was. Like the 40s, I was not with you. Just FYI. Actually, you were 40 and we were together. Yes. Okay. When I was 38, <laughs> I broke Fenton and Randy up. Can I just say, let's talk about this offline, okay? <laughs> okay. No, it's you the know, the show was created. You know that dart thing that blew up an asteroid? I'm sending one your way. It's hey. pretty, pretty close. <laughs> 40, a 40 is great. 40s are a great decade, an awesome decade. You're finally smart enough to like get beyond your bullshit, your self-doubt. Your body still works. Have fun. Have sex. Uh, yes. uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not saying be crazy about it, but like enjoy all of it. 50s not bad either. 40 is rocking good. I so love my 30s. You. I think the 40s will be even better. You can oh. still walk. You still got your cognitive recall. You know, you still got your looks. What do you say? Yes. What was that? <laughs> well, happy birthday, Blake. Couldn't happen to a nicer Thank person. You. Blake, we love you. Love you Very too. Much. Well, let's take a break.
my gosh. Um, and when we come back, we'll reveal the number one thing this week that made us go, wow. wow. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. We've been counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow here with Randy and Tom and Blake. And we've reached number one. Number one. I'm going to set it up this way. Uh, uh, Apple Music, it was announced, is taking over the sponsorship of the Super Bowl halftime show. And that's what was keeping Tyler, uh, Taylor Swift from performing. There was all these earlier in the week conspiracy theories that Taylor Swift would be announced as the halftime show for the Super Bowl. And then, bam, it was announced that Rihanna is the halftime it's show. It's Riri. Thank God. I, I'm so happy that it's Rihanna and not Taylor Swift. I like Taylor Swift's like more poppy stuff, not the country's early stuff. But I love Rihanna, and I've always wanted her to do a Super Bowl show. And I'm so excited that maybe this means the new album is coming out. So Rihanna has done something that no pop artist has done for like a generation. She truly stepped away from music. She didn't say she was going to and get back on. She didn't drop Twitter and join a week later. She has, for whatever reason, stepped away from music, had her Fancy brand. Beauty. And, yeah. And her Fendi and all that. But like, you know, she, could, she could have done sessions. So I am thrilled. She isn't the number one lip sync song on Dry Rage Artist that lip syncs. But if she had more songs, she would be because they're all classic lip syncs. And my favorite meme going around right now is that uh, Tatiana and Alyssa Edwards, who lip sync to Shut Up and Drive, that uh-huh. they must be part of Rihanna's, Rihanna's halftime Super Bowl show. And and I'm just putting it out there because that's one of the best ideas I've ever heard. I don't, I wouldn't care. Yeah, I would love that. But I wouldn't care if she just stood there with a, with a sheet behind her and sang. I yeah. love her. Um, she need, we need new music from her. It is, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm applauding her for her own time schedule, but now I'm like, okay, come on, come on. Give me a remix, something, come on. Yep. Congratulations, Riri. We can't wait to see the show. Thank you, Randy, for joining us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Blake. Uh, you can catch previous episodes of The Wow Report on our Wow Presents YouTube channel. And other than that, I hope we'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow.